Greetings from the Witch House. I am Dr. Gallo. If you've ever found yourself in a secluded, quiet spot amongst the trees, unable to shake the eerie feeling that something out there is watching you, please let me assure you, you're not alone. <laughs> Tonight's terrifying tale features the enormous vocal talents of very special guest Evan D. Shelton of The Lurking Transmission. Sit back, relax, and lock your doors as I present a Dr. Gallo original entitled Tracks. I've been going to the cabin since I was a kid. My dad used to take me often, just as his father had taken him, to learn about the great outdoors and to fish and whatnot. Nobody was really sure who owned the place. If it had belonged to someone outside our ken, they had certainly never made it known, and us Crandalls had been staying up there for so many years, nobody could remember a time when it hadn't been in the family. It was a simple affair. A door, four windows with curtains, and an old stone fireplace. The cabin itself was made of wood, pine, and its unmistakable smell hadn't dwindled even a little over the years. It was just toward the end of winter two years ago when I last visited the place. The landscape still a beautiful painting, rendered in snow, silver, and green. Before that, I don't recall how long it had been exactly, but I reckon it must have been coming up on five years or so. I had only planned to stay for a couple of nights. It was the perfect place to get away from things, and life had been a little hectic for what felt like a long time. I needed the space, the solitude, to clear my head. I'd made the drive easily, even in the snow. There was hardly anyone else on the road. The cabin isn't exactly close to any place anyone would be heading to. I don't think I saw another car at all for the last hour or so of the journey. I'd switched off my phone and dug out a well-thumbed book, and that was how I'd spent the day, enjoying every second of my own company. Eventually, it was time for bed. The fire was burning low. The chicken legs I'd cooked on it had been eaten, and almost half of the modestly priced bottle of whiskey that was warming me up from the inside had been drunk. With a rubber hot water bottle under my blanket, I fell contentedly to sleep. I remember waking up to the sound of the forest animals outside the cabin, crunching in the snow. I figured there had to have been two or three of them out there, running around and playing together. The footfalls were too heavy to be rabbits, but too soft to have been bears, so I figured they could have only have been deer. It wasn't too long before I drifted happily off to sleep again. I knew it was morning when I heard the birds, although it still wasn't quite daylight out. I got up and raked the fire, which had all but died. It was still warm in the cabin, but I knew that would pass quick, so I pulled my coat on and walked out the door toward the car to get some dry firewood from the trunk. I looked down and saw something in the morning half-light that stopped me dead. There, in the snow, were the tracks of whatever had been running around the cabin all night. It was handprints. Dozens and dozens of handprints. Christ alone knows how I made it back down in the car in the half-light and half-drunk, skidding on the slush all over the roads, but I did, without a backwards glance. I was terrified of what I might see behind me. I got no idea what sort of condition the cabin would be in now. I left the door open, and I'm sure as hell not going back to close it. If someone finds the other half of my bottle, they can have it. They're going to need it. I'm not sure where this story ends, really. I haven't been back to the cabin these past years, but it snowed here yesterday, and I was reminded, horribly, of that last morning at the cabin. Today, when I went outside to get my newspaper, the only track in the fresh snow on the path outside was a pair of handprints just outside my front door. <laughs>